Hey guys, today I've got another coding project here to show you, except it's actually kind of more of a two-in-one project. Now they're very similar. I've got Rainbow and Rainbow Creator, and uh, basically uh, they both have to do with color. And so some of you guys can see this is going from like zero to or black to blue and then kind of flashing off, and you might be wondering why in the world I'm interested in that. Um, so I'll kind of get into that, but first got to explain some things I learned about digital colors. So uh, a lot of people know what a hex code is for colors, but I don't think most people know how they work. So uh, a hex code is this six character number, which uh, the characters range from zero to nine and then include the letters A through F because it counts in hexadecimal. Um, and the reason it's six characters and the reason it uses hexadecimal is actually very important. So uh, it's actually broken up into three groups of two. So you've got EB, 40 and 34 and what those represent is the amount of red the amount of green and then the amount of blue so this eb represents the amount of red um, and since the letters come after the numbers starting with an e means you have quite a bit of red and we can see that demonstrated down here is that uh, 235 is much greater than the 64 and 52 and then once we go into the uh, 4 0, that's the amount of green, and the 34 is the amount of blue. So if we were to set this EB to 0, what do you think would happen? Well, now we get a little bit of green and a little bit of blue, but it's very little, so it's closer to black, but it gives us more of this teal color. So FF is the highest we can go. So if we did FF, FF, that gives us a bunch of green and a bunch of blue, which gives us this beautiful teal color. Now, if we were to say 0, 0, FF, 0, 0, that's pure green. And then we could do 00FF for pure blue, or we could just do FF0000 for poor red, pure red, sorry. And so that's kind of how hex codes work. And once I learned that, I learned how I could kind of do this project. So basically what this program does, and I'll show you the code in a second, but it's essentially creating a hexadecimal number, getting that color and filling the screen with it. So as you can see, it goes from black to blue and then adds a little bit of green. So it's essentially going from 0, 0 to FF, and then we get a 1 next to it, and then 0, 0 to FF, so it's adding a little bit more green each time. Now, once we get to that teal color I showed you earlier, where we have FF, FF, so full green and full blue, what's actually going to happen is it's going to add a tiny bit of red and then reset. So it'll be almost unnoticeable, and it'll take a long, long time to get to full white, which is all the colors at once, but it will eventually happen. Now I decided to make a modified version of this program, which you can kind of barely see up here, but in this top left corner, you can see it's creating lines. It's going from black to blue, and each new line has a little bit more green, and eventually we'll get a full square, and at the bottom right of that square will be that teal color with full blue and full green. And then it will look like it resets again, and when it resets, it has a tiny bit of red. So if this program were to continue on forever and not lag out, which I expect it to, um, it'll eventually have 256 squares where the last one has a bunch of red in it and is fully white at the bottom right. And it will have every possible hex code that a computer can generate on it. So let's hop over into the code and show you guys how these two programs work. All right, so here we have the first one I showed you, just the rainbow, which does the full page and kind of goes through that. And it's a little bit simpler to understand, so we're going to start with that one. And as you can see, it just kind of gets the entire page and gives us some information on the thing. We just get an entire div that has the entire page in it. And then we have this JavaScript, which is running. And basically, we have these two variables, current color and current hex color. And what happens is the current hex color just becomes the current color. And there's this handy dandy built-in function called toString, which converts a number into a hexadecimal number. So it makes that for us, which is really nice. Um, and then... I had a problem where, let's say, um, the current color was zero, it would just default from six zeros to one zero. So if the length of the hex color is less than six digits long, we have to add zeros to it by making it a string and add zeros to it until it is six digits long. And then all I do is make the background color that hex color and then update what color we're doing. And then um, if that current color reaches the maximum value, which is this, this is FFFFFF, but written out in base 10 instead of hexadecimal. And then we just say, well, the cycle is completed and end the loop. Now for the rainbow creator, this one has the same basis, but it's a little bit longer. 
So you can see we still have some of uh, these uh, CSS elements, same just entire page element. And then uh, here is where things get interesting. So we have quite a few more variables, which are named really funny things. I was very confused when making this. So I kind of came up with these weird variable names that I'm not totally sure what they mean anymore, but it does work. So uh, what this actually does is this is the exact same loop we had before, where it's saying add the zeros if needed, and we have our start color, and we have some other things here. So it creates these one by one pixel spans of that color uh, as it goes along. And then once uh, we've reached this 256, which means we've had a full line, I had to make it separately create a new line. So it makes a brand new line to jump down so it doesn't just keep making them in a straight line forever. Uh, and then we get um, this problem of well, uh, how do we stop it from lagging? Because it could only do probably like 10 lines before it was freezing up so badly that it wouldn't even stop. And obviously, you know, with a project of this size with so many things displaying on the screen at once, you probably could never get the thing to run completely. So, but to make it as efficient as possible, what I actually started doing is creating gradients. So once a new line is reached, I replace all of those one by one pixels. So I'm replacing 256 of these objects with a single object that's a gradient of the start color to the end color. So that's why we have these start color objects and end color or start color variables and end color variables because it keeps track of well what color did we start on on this line and what color did we end on and then it creates this gradient here this is the line where the gradient's created and then you can see it replaces the half thing with the gradient so a half thing is basically just that line and this thing is what's being currently created um, and old half thing is what the old line used to be and the full thing I'm pretty sure is the entire thing that is displayed on the screen so you can see I liked the word thing a lot anyway I hope you found this interesting and if you did I've got some more coding projects on my channel if you want to check those out and thanks for watching